The M5 is an American light tank, an improved version of the M3. It began production in 1941 and ended production in 1944. Including all variants, over 22,000 were made. It was distributed to Great Britain through the Lend Lease Act. The M5 was mainly used for reconnaissance, but was mounted with a 3 shot 37mm autoloader, which allowed it to stand against Panzer II and Panzer III's, but it could not stand against the superior Panzer IVs. It saw service mainly during the North African Campaign in the Pacific Theater. The M4 Sherman tank is the face of American forces in World War II. They were commonly used tanks and saw combat all over the world. It was deployed in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, the European Theater, and the Pacific Theater. More than 50,000 Shermans were produced between 1942 and 1945. Mounting a short barrel, low velocity 75mm cannon, the Shermans were effective against the German Panzer II, III, and IV, but were no match for the Tiger I's, Panthers, and Tiger II's. It was used as infantry support, spearheading charges, and defending areas rather than anti tank The M10 Wolverine is not technically a tank, rather it is classified as a tank destroyer. The purpose of the M10 and its successors is purely anti-tank based. Using the hull of a Sherman, the army mounted open top turret with a 76mm. Its successor to the M36 Jackson mounted a 90mm, but served the same role. Around 6,000 variants of the M10 were made from 1942 to late 1944, along with the 2000 M36s made from early 1944 to late 1944. It was primarily used on the Western Front. The Panzer II is a German light tank, which is an improved variant of the Panzer I. It began production in 1936 and ending production in 1945. Including all variants, only around 1,800 were made. It was the Germans' main tank for the first few years, but when the Panzer III and the Panzer IV came around, its main job became reconnaissance. Unlike the Panzer I, which mounted only machine guns, the Panzer II mounted a 20mm autocannon during its first few years. It was used on all fronts, then was slowly replaced with its successors. The Panzer III is the first medium tank designed by the Germans. When production began in 1939, it mounted a 37mm anti-tank cannon and two machine guns. During its production, around 5,000 Panzer III's were made. The need for greater firepower and more protection was apparent by 1941. The newer version was given a 50mm gun and fitted with an armor thickness of up to 50mm. When Panzer III became irrelevant, those of them were brought back to be converted to the Stug III, which is a self-propelled gun tank destroyer which has the highest number of tank kills of any German tank, only because around 10,000 Stugs were made. The Panzer IV was originally intended to be the infantry support tank, but ended up being the backbone of Germany's Panzer division from 1939 to the war's end. Including all variants, around 8,500 were made. The Panzer III became irrelevant, and the Panzer IV took over, winning 75mm long better anti-tank gun, up to 80mm of frontal armor, and had better maneuverability than the Panzer III, even though it was heavier. The gun of the Panzer IV made it in par with the Soviet T-34s and superior to the American and for Sherman. It saw service on all fronts during the Cold War. The Tiger or Panzer V is the last and largest tank used by Germany and is the most famous tank of World War II. Beginning production in 1942 and ending in 1945, only 1,500 were made, but the ones that were made wreaked havoc on entire tank divisions being in the same route as the KV-2. Its long-barreled, high-velocity 88mm gun could penetrate even the most heavily armored tanks at extremely long range. On top of that, its frontal armor was 100mm, meaning that most of the tanks at the time had no hope of penetrating armor. One such example is a target tank ace Michael Whitman, who took out the entire grid of some armored division by himself. The T-26 is a Soviet infantry support tank, which is a direct copy of the British Vickers Marquis. It began production in 1931, and its service life ended around 1945, but continued being used in other countries such as Spain and Finland. During its production, around 12,000 were made, 
The T26A models were used for infantry support since they were mounted with machine guns, but stood no chance against other tanks. B series was used for anti-tank operations since they were mounted with 37 and or 45mm cannons. It was the most important vehicle during the Spanish Civil War and saw a lot of use during the Winter War and the Battle of Lake Kassan. The T-34 is a Soviet medium tank, which made up the majority of the Red Army's tanks. It began production in 1940 and continued being produced till the end of the war, including every variant over 85,000 were produced. The T-34-57 was mounted with a fast-firing anti-tank 57mm cannon, which was later upgraded to the T-34-76, which mounted a 76mm anti-tank cannon. The latest model was the T-34-85, which had a larger, stronger turret and an 85mm cannon. What made the tank so prominent was its sloped armor, which allowed for less material to be used for the same amount of protection. This tank was used on all fronts during the war. The KV-1 was the first heavy tank used by the Soviets. Its production started in 1939 and around 5,000 of them were made. But production slowly stopped around 1942 since it had become obsolete and had a bigger brother replacement, the IS-2. But during its service around 1941, its armor was so thick to a point that most German tanks of the time had trouble taking it down. But the armor made it slow, around 20 miles per hour, and it weighed almost 50 tons, making its 800 horsepower engine very unwieldy during a battle. It made its debut during the Winter War, whereas other Soviet tanks of the T-34 failed to finish tactics and ambushes, the KV-1 shined due to its armor. Its main role was breaking through defensive walls, allowing for more maneuverable T-34s to take over. After seeing the success of the KV-1 in the Winter War, the Soviet High Command decided to mount a 152mm howitzer onto a KV-1 hull to blow up the Finnish bunkers on the Mannerheim line, which led to the production of the KV-2. Two prototypes were made, and they did well enough, and began mass production in 1940 just in time to greet the Germans in 1941 during Operation Barbosa. When the Germans met it, their tanks had no hope of stopping it, as its turret and hull armor exceeded 110 mm of effective thickness. Its primary job was to blow up fortified positions, and if it ran out of those, it would wreak havoc onto entire panzer divisions. One such example was during the Battle of Rasenili, where a KV-2 and a few KV-1s halted the entire 6th Panzer Division for a whole day. As they were powerless to kill it, and only prevailed when the Soviet crews ran out of ammunition and ran off. As a result, most were taken up by infantry attacks rather than opposing tanks. As a downside to the large gun, it has a large turret, making it have a large profile and making it much heavier, making it slower and harder to transport, as well as the recoil of the gun itself could jam the turret, and the transmission and drivetrain from the KV-1 couldn't handle the extra rate of the large gun and turret. By October 1941, production had stopped. The Cruiser Mark III was the first model of the British Cruiser series of tanks. The Cruiser series of tanks focused on speed and lacked armor. The Cruiser Mark III's production began in 1938 and ended in 1941. Despite its long production time, only around 65 were made. It mounted a QF 2-pounder or 40mm gun. It was sent to France and almost all of them were lost. The Cruiser Mark II is one of the first tanks made in the Cruiser class of tanks. It was in service from 1940 to 1941, and around 175 were built. It mounted an OQF 2-pounder or 40mm cannon. Because of this, it was classed as a heavy cruiser, which when it was sent to France and Asia, almost all of them were lost due to mechanical failure. The Cruiser Mark IV was an attempt to improve the Cruiser Mark III. It was produced at the same time as the Cruiser Mark II, and mounted the same weapon. When it was sent to France and Asia, they encountered the same problems as their predecessors. Most cruisers were replaced by Crusaders and Cromwells by 1942. The A-34 Comet was introduced to replace all previous cruiser series tanks in 1944. Because of the late introduction date, it didn't see much World War II service. The Matilda II was the lighter infantry class tank. Being a much needed upgrade from its predecessor, the Matilda I, its production began in 1937 and ended in 1943. Almost 3,000 were made. What made the Matilda II so prominent was its 80 plus millimeter armor, which could easily withstand any German tank shell, as well as its quick firing 40 millimeter cannon, which was later upgraded to a 90 millimeter howitzer. 
The first Usul and Matilda was when 23 of them were sent to France. Its most prominent use was in America. The Soviets received about 1,000 Matilda IIs from the Lind Lease Act. The Churchill series of tanks was the heaviest infantry class tank. Infantry class tanks focused on armor protection and lacked speed, the opposite of a cruiser tank. The Churchill series of tanks was produced throughout the war, starting with the Mark I in 1941 and ending with the Mark VII in 1944. The most produced models are the Mark IV, Mark VI, and Mark VII. The Mark I mounted a 40mm, while most other models mounted a 75mm cannon.